Support for this podcast and message comes from Teach It Labs. Create, innovate, provoke with teachitlabs.com. Hello, my name is Dr. John Spencer. And this is Dr. Stephen Jones. And this is the STEM Forward podcast, where we take a look at careers in the STEM field. So, Steve, today we're going to take a look at electromechanical technicians. OK, well, what is that? You know, I, I say this quite a bit. You know, we're, we're introducing these careers, but I know when we first started thinking about, you know, this particular episode, you said we, we have to talk about robotics. We just did that on one of our last streams. So we have to talk about robotics a little more. But when you look robotics up, one of the things that you find is electromechanical technicians. Yeah, and there's so many different ways that um, people are learning to interact with all this new technology and robots are not going away. Robots are going to be every aspect of our lives as we continue to move forward. Um, I know my car is pretty much a robot <laughs> so with all it does it is capable of doing. Um, mm-hmm. And so what we're trying to do is introduce a topic that's an opportunity for anyone that's considering different types of um, fields in this, the STEM area. Mm-hmm. So, so when you ask the question, what do electromechanical te- electromechanical technicians do? That there are technicians that operate, test, and maintain unmanned, automated robotics or electromechanical equipment. And I was thinking about that last night. I was watching one of my favorite shows on Netflix, and it was in a college situation, but it had, you know, fast forward 18 years later to when one of their children were going to school and they're moving their child um, into campus. But you notice in the background, there's all these drones flying overhead with, with, with packages and different things. And you just see them branch out the different things. And that might not be in the, in the far, uh, too far distant future. You know, when you, when you think about it. And one of the things I always try to say to people, um, if you look at media as a gateway to make us comfortable, um, you still need humans to work on the robots. Yes, you do. You do. And and uh, one of the things I'm looking at the duties of the electrical me- electromechanical technicians. And one of the things that they have to be able to, to do is to be very detailed and very precise in working with the various instruments as they're kind of maintaining these robots in all different f- types of forms. and. You know, one of the forms that comes to mind is, um, you know, I was in a supermarket just walking around the store and they actually have a robot that roams the store looking for spills, looking for inventory, what's in, what's out. And, you know, as I saw the robot going through the store, I said, somebody has to maintain this. Somebody, some technician has to ensure that when they push the button, this robot goes and operates. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, you have to. I think that is missed when the argument about automation and, and who's really is, is taking jobs. I, I think that point is missed that there is still some human interaction uh, with the robot. And as you were just saying, some of the you no, know, not just being detail oriented, you, you know, you have to have a certain amount of dexterity. So you have to be good with your hands. So, so a child or teenager that may be good with their hands, um, you know, this may be a field to go to go into. But also, like you were just saying, somebody's controlling the robot. Somebody has to have good writing skills as well, because you have to write and talk about how the robot works Mm -hmm. and how to repair it if something goes wrong. So there's there's many things that that have to happen um, or that go into making you a good electromechanical technician that starts in um, elementary school. Mm -hmm. One of the things, you know, when I talk to my students who don't necessarily see the purpose of reading various books and and writing stories and things like that, 
I tell them, you know, you're going to be doing that the rest of your life. You, you have to be able to read and understand and comprehend. But then on the same hand, you have to be able to explain yourself. And so that that is one of the skills that that's vital in a career like this. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad that you take the time to connect the learning experience to actual working opportunity. Because a lot of times when students are sitting in a class, they say, well, why am I learning this reading? Why am I learning this math? I don't see the application of it. I, I think the earlier that we get to young people to expose them to these types of opportunities, these types of training, the better the chances are that they'll, they'll have an opportunity to uh, get additional education and get engaged in these fields. Mm hmm. Yeah, this week, my teachers, we were looking at some data and looking at eighth graders in particular, and they were having problems with slope intercept. And one of the things I kept talking to the teachers about is how are you making it real for the students? How are you explaining how this will work in the real world? You know, you have to help the students build context to make those various connections, to make the content come alive and they, they can conceptualize it and actually do the problems. Because another key component um, to being an electromechanical um, technician is math skills and logical thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, because you have to be able to carry out the engineer's plans. Um, you know, definitely have to know measurement. You know, and, and it's more than the imperial system. You have to know um, uh, the metric system. You know, or you may have to make a new tool to make a new gear or something, you know, because it doesn't what you need doesn't exist yet. Yeah, that's that's really true. There's a lot of customization and um, as technicians are working on the various types of robots um, uh, and often they're one of a kind because some mm -hmm. of them are so expensive that, you know, you just can't make them. Um, you know, 10, 20 at a time. So you, you had to do a really good job of providing instructions for that individual unit mm -hmm. and for people who will work closely with it, they'll be able to understand what they need to do, what steps they need to take if they run into a problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like many of the careers that we feature on this particular podcast, this is a entry level technician that you can get with an associate's degree. And it pays an average of $28 an hour. That, that's a long way from uh, set, uh, $7 an hour, which I think is the federal minimum wage. And even that's almost double $15 an hour. So you wouldn't even have to worry about the fight for 15 um, if you went to a community college and, and majored in, in something like this. Um, so if you were at a local community college, some of the programs and concentrations that you may want to look at are electromechanics or uh, electromechronics or industrial maintenance or process control. You know, those are some of the things that, that you can look at. And it has a pretty uh, good growth rate. You know, it's faster than average. So that that is another reason. Um as our society becomes more technologically advanced, more technicians are going to be needed to keep everything up and running. We're not going to be in a situation where robots are only fixing robots. Right. And, and so um, they're also going to need people that have the training, kind of the train the trainers. So they're mm -hmm. going to need people who have the technical skills that can train other people. Mm -hmm. And so you want to position yourself. I always say continuous learning. You know, you just don't learn how to work with the robots and now I'm done for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. No, you have to be in the continuous learning process because they'll be using different techniques and different types of materials on these robots. And you have to keep yourself open to those possibilities. Mm -hmm. So if we get more specific about some of the duties that um, that the technicians do that electromechanical technicians do. It includes repairing, calibrating hydraulic and pneumatic assemblies, um, inspecting parts for surface deficiencies, installing electronic parts and hardware using soldering equipment, hand tools, operating, testing, and maintaining robotic equipment, 
and analyzing results uh, from records. I mean, analyzing results from tests and preparing written documentation. So it's a pretty involved job for entry level position. You know, because at that twenty eight thousand, I mean, twenty eight dollars an hour yields an average salary of fifty eight thousand dollars a year. Um, which puts you in pretty good economic standing. Because if you, if you think about it, you can graduate from high school, go to your local community college, and do very well for yourself by the time you're 20. And and these will remain in high demand for, for decades. And you're positioning yourself to move along with it. Uh, I was looking at the last thing that you mentioned um, in terms of testing... Uh, the robots and and the equipment. And one of the things that we tell the engineers is failure is not failure. Failure is information so that you can do the right thing the next time. Mm -hmm. So you're analyzing and testing to figure out what what will work and what doesn't work. And that's all a part of the job as well. One of the things I like to say to my, my children, that failing is the first attempt in learning. You know, you, you're going to have many failures before you have uh, success. So when you look at work environments, um, a lot of people with this particular um, set of skills will find themselves in uh, machinery manufacturing, engineering services, uh, navigational measuring, electromedical control instrument manufacturing, transportation equipment manufacturing, semiconductor or other electronic component mm -hmm. manufacturing. So this is interesting because what I don't think people understand when you see a lot of things on the news about manufacturing and different things coming back to the United States. But in some respects, we're not producing enough people with the skills for this type of manufacturing to occur. So that, that that's one of the reasons why we are um, uh, spotlighting things like this. So if we, if say Intel or AMD was to move all their manufacturing back to the United States for semiconductors and microchips, do we have enough people that are skilled enough at the electromechanical technician level to do it? Right. You know, we, we have to have a workforce for those companies to come back. And one of the things I think that needs to happen in the next couple of years as we transition from things like coal and fossil fuel, which a lot of things is nothing but brute force. We're going to have to have massive retraining programs to to get people in these types of uh, positions. Yeah, and they, you know, it's always um opportunity to kind of take what what they what you're learning in this field and expand beyond that. I just want to encourage so a lot of times students will go for the associate degree, they'll work a little while, and then after they've worked a little while, then they go for their bachelor's degree. So it, this may not be the end of your educational experience once you get into the field. You might want to take other steps. And often there are um, companies your company will pay for you to go back and get your bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. So, and, and thinking about um, a K to 12 student getting themselves ready or to, for you to know that this may be a good career for you. Um, if you go with your hands, if, if you show um, a curiosity for building and making things, um, if you're good at written and oral communication, it, it may be, you, you have engineer in your mind, but, you know, not quite sure, you know, this may be the entry level position like Steve was talking about just to get your feet wet. Um, and, you know, kind of let that curiosity take you somewhere that can make you fi uh, financially sustainable. You know, th this is something that is offered at the majority of community colleges throughout the country. Yeah, so you have a whole network of potential students who are learning similar kinds of things. Uh, one of the things that 
all universities go through is something called accreditation. And that accreditation validates that they're offering a good education at a certain level that's a uh, college level. So, you know, you, you always want to make sure that the programs that you're getting into are already certified um, and approved as a, a actual curriculum. When you think about work schedules, you know, it may be shift work, um, different manufact- uh, factories or manufacturing um, opportunities. So uh, probably like 40 hours a week, depending on what type of projects. As we said, the, the pay is, is pretty good. If you become electromechanical, mechanotronics technologist or technician, that's, that's 58. Drafters, engineering technicians, mapping technicians, 57. Um, with the total all occupation at $39,000, which puts you well on your way. So, Steve, any parting words for this particular well, career? Yeah, well, th- this is a phenomenal career. Um, I, I want those who are listening to begin to do some research on this. There, uh, as was mentioned, different types of nuances to it. And you can call the local community college and see what kinds of courses that they offer um, in these areas just to see, because some co- community colleges might specialize in a certain aspect of robotics. Mm-hmm. Um, also research with the companies that are producing the robots, find mm-hmm. out information. They might have some training programs there as well uh, for individuals. And it's worth investing the time if you're that student that is hands-on, practical, wants to develop and use their innovative skills and assemble, you know, into assembling things, taking things apart and putting them back together, analyzing the, all those skill sets are required. And I hope that some of you out there who are listening will consider this as a great opportunity. And one of the things I would say to my K to 12 parents, when, when you notice, um, that your children love pulling the, pulling things apart or trying to build things together. Buy them models, you know, buy them robots and different things that they can put together. And let's just see where it takes them. So once again, this particular podcast was looking at electromechanical technicians. Children, make sure you talk to your teachers, talk to your counselors and find out more. Once again, this is Dr. John Spencer. And Dr. Stephen Jones. Thank you for joining us with STEM Forward. Have a good one.